It's another beautiful day here at the Isle of the Smile, Sri Lanka. Anders and I are stopping by the Horathopole estate, a fine villa north of Colombo, where they crush their black pepper by foot, the traditional way. Only one gear on this thing, but it does the job just fine. Our chef, Vijay, shows us around his impressive pantry, several hectares of lush Sri Lankan farmland. A little help on aisle three, please. You don't need, you don't hey, drink, so, you no, don't no, drink no, this. No, 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 no. And uh, this, we only need one of these. Well, yeah. One is enough. Yeah, that's enough. enough. This beast here is the jackfruit, native to the island. It's nearly the weight of a bowling ball and spiky to the touch, like something plucked out of a coral reef. A crucial step in preparing this curry is the coconut milk. A common theme we are beginning to notice. And here again, a clay pot lit by wood fire. Sri Lankan traditions inform all the details here at Hora Fubora. Also on the menu tonight, a rich and hearty black pork curry. A toast to the chef. Thank you so much. Picking all the leaves and the vegetables for this wonderful dish. This is uniquely Sri Lankan. Fiery, sweet and sour, fresh, crunchy at the same time. So I like the different textures. With the jackfruit, it's warm, it's hot, it's like the German style hot potato salad of the tropics. If you have problems with, at some point, German guests, this is what you serve them. Jackfruit curry with curry boost. Yeah, you could, you could do that. Whoa, I just concepted a whole dish there. After two full bellies and a restful night's stay, Anders and I make our way to the paddy fields along the island's southern coast, where we learn firsthand the art of shaving a coconut. The coconut is many things to Sri Lanka. You'll find coconut oil in virtually every kitchen, and the shavings are used for milk and relishes too. Today's treat is a mackerel fritter. Onion, curry leaves, ginger and garlic hit the pan while Anders and I get to the peeling. After a touch of chili flakes, we are ready for the potatoes. Then comes the mackerel with a kiss of lime. Mix evenly and roll it up like so. Dip each one in egg batter, flour and breading. Now send them into the fryer. When they're ready, don't wait too long. These perfect bites are best served hot. Here's the mackerel. Chunky. And onions like this. and potato. You could probably mince it more. But and there's curry leaves and the flake chili. Oh, this is good. Mm. Very nice. Mm. Mm -hmm. very, very nice. This is how you're supposed to eat them fresh exactly. out of the cooker. Crispy. <laughs> we are here at the Foundation of Goodness to learn how to make string hoppers. Our friend Pradeep has a practiced hand and he sends the rice flour through the hand press like a natural. Good! <laughs> Excellent! String hoppers provide a tasty way to scoop up whatever else is on your plate and the thin ribbony texture is a special treat you'll only find on the island. Stick around the island long enough and you are bound to hear about this place, the Ministry of Crap. The reason that we have our walls in yellow or orange being our colors for two reasons. One is because when the crab gets cooked, it turns that color. And it is the old Dutch hospital, so Dutch colors are orange. <laughs> we don't add salt into our food because the crab has natural salt elements. It's a kilo crab, so it's quite big in there. Homemade pepper stock sauce, very deep flavors, I mean dense. 
I started asking scholars and historians and about three, four hundred years ago, we did not have red chilies. We had only black pepper and all our curries in Sri Lanka were cooked out of black pepper. For me, the back legs, the ones with the flipper, that's the most used muscle, the, the meat that attaches itself to this flipper. So if you can peel the meat around it, it's the most sweetest and most succulent part of the thing. Yeah, this is really, really nice. It's really nice. a funny thing to have pepper as the main ingredient. And then and the salt that you set from the, from the crab itself. We have a small country, coastline is 300 yards from here. This restaurant is one of the few restaurants in the world that has no freezer. So we don't buy anything frozen, we don't freeze anything, and everything is fresh. It comes in ice and we use it in a day. We get some great seafood and uh, I think respecting that is my duty as a Sri Lankan. Another mainstay in the Sri Lankan cookbook is Kiribat a rice pudding made in homes all across the island. Here again, the coconut is shredded and pressed into milk. Light a fire beneath your trusty clay pot and boil the rice with the coconut milk. Spread the rice over a clean banana leaf and cut to serve. In Sri Lanka, you will get kiribat for breakfast, and it is an essential dish for any auspicious moment. It's also great for balancing out the strong flavors you'll find on most Sri Lankan tables. Okay, I understand why the kids like this uh, black pepper. Yeah. It is a little bit like the rice pudding that we have, or the rice porridge we have for, for Christmas. Yeah. Good, very good. Yes. Can I see your fingers on us? See? Ooh, you're yeah, still yeah. on the right side. <laughs> We're on the good side. Tonight's dinner is our last meal of the journey. Egg hoppers. Like the string hoppers before, egg hoppers are perfect for wrapping around your assortment of curries and sambals. As the name implies, you cannot make one without cracking a few eggs. For breakfast, lunch or dinner, the egg hopper is a staple of Sri Lankan cooking. Now we, we know about the, the various curries, the dry ones, the wet ones, we know about the hoppers and so on, but there is also something that's so hard to mixing and there's some individual freedom. Completely personal taste. Yeah. I've always been one to uh, have my sweet and my savory together, yeah. but Kinali won't hear of it. But that's the way people are, you know. If the curries are done to perfection, I think, every bite that you have, regardless of if you're mixing or if you're doing it separately, it's perfect. These, these you wouldn't necessarily load up on your plate. They're just to sort of add more pizzazz to that bite of chicken and the bite of, yes, absolutely. Nigel here is a lawyer in Colombo, and his family has welcomed Anders and I with the warmth and hospitality you can find anywhere on the island. Hundreds of years ago, at the dawn of the spice trade, the Persians had a name for the island. They called it Serendip. And from this word came one we still use today, Serendipity. Take a bite of fine Sri Lankan cooking, and I promise you a journey full of serendipitous surprises. Sri Lankan cuisine stands tall as a marvelous contribution to the world's table. Take a seat, take a bite, and find out for yourself.